if you're thinking about moving to the south, I want to give you a little description to help you decide whether that's something you want to do or not. You see, here in the south, like yesterday, it could be almost 70 degrees. Today, it's 45. The Arctic attack has started. Well, that's typical, right? It's typical for everybody. And, you know, y'all way up north, you're probably saying, oh, it gets colder here, we get snow, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I know. We used to live in Colorado, still not as cold as Minnesota or Michigan. But in the south, in the winter, we never know what we're going to get. We can go through all four seasons in one day, definitely in a week's time including tornadoes that was a threat like a week ago now tonight it's going to be down to 26 degrees and tomorrow night and the next night and then we're back up into normal so our winters are not predictable even the weather surface they're winging it it's like a roulette wheel they never know where it's going to land Neither do we. Now the summers, they are predictable. It's either hot or it's raining. Or it's hot and raining. That you can count on. And if it's hot and raining, you'll see steam transpiring from the ground like a low hot fog. So, if you're not a person that can handle wearing flip-flops early on a cold morning after an 80 degree day the day before to run outside and cover up your pipe so they don't freeze you probably don't want to move to the south aren't these blooms just beautiful makes you think of spring it's a plum tree we planted two plum trees last year where we had apple trees because Charlie and Lucy ate the apple trees. So we planted these mid-spring. And I haven't even had a chance to prune them because look, they are blooming. You would think it was March or April. No. It's January 19th, 2020, in Opelika, Alabama. We have had such a mild winter, such a warm winter, that these two plum trees are blooming. And tonight, as I mentioned in the intro, for the next three days, we are going to have weather dipping down to 26 degrees for three nights in a row. These trees have to be protected. So we're out gardening today, doing a couple things. We'll show you what we're doing and how we're going to protect these two plum trees, hopefully against the frost. Probably about five years ago, maybe six, when we were still doing in-ground planting, um, I purchased a um, frost protection blanket and really, it was used more for insect protection. This is Agribon. Actually has its little label here in the middle. Comes in long rolls. I think this is a six foot wide roll by a lot of length. But we used it as row covers. Uh, here, I'll throw up a picture. So as I said, we used it probably more for insect protection with our fall and early spring vegetables like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, that sort of thing. Some of the first things that you plant. Um, it really protects against any insect, thrips, beetles, you name it. It protects against it. But it also filters some of the light. And, and with Agribon, you can get different uh, weights. 
um, I'm, this is a real lightweight one. The lightest weight one, you get 90%, I think, um, transmission of light through it, but there's no frost protection in it. So this, the next one up is the one I got, which is, I think, Ag 19, maybe? And frost-wise, it protects, or supposed to protect, down to six to eight degrees, I believe. But I'm telling you, I've used this before on our peach trees, the one uh, that died two years in a row because we had the same situation. We protected it, but it still froze and killed the tree. Well, we're going to try again and see how we do here. Now, if I were having to leave this up for a long period of time, I would probably use some string, nylon, or something to tie around it. But it's just for three days. So we're basically just going to drape and wrap and uh, hold them with clothespins. So let's get to it. It's not windy right now, so that's not really going to help me much. But the wind is coming from this direction. Okay, one done, one to go. And the last thing we're doing today is trying to protect the bulbs that we have planted in these fruit tree guilds from the dogs. They are continuing to dig up the bulbs. Um, where we put the chicken wire down over our gladiator alliums has worked we really don't want to have to resort to putting chicken wire over this whole thing, and we may have to. So we're trying some other things first. I googled and I read that there are several things that you can put out, cayenne pepper being one, but that, you know, even though if they were to eat it, it wouldn't bother them, it can inflame their nasal passages, and I don't want to do that to the dogs. So another thing they said they do not like the smell of is citrus specifically lemon. So, I had some lemons in the house. I uh, put two in, the juice from two, in two gallons of water and I had just a tiny bit of the orange oil that I use for the ant spray uh, left. And so, I put a tiny bit of that. It was maybe a teaspoon. I could have put way more than that. But we are spraying around the areas where we planted the bulbs and then we're going to add at least a good two inches of some pine mulch on top. I don't know if it'll work. We'll just have to see but I'll keep all updated as to whether or not that did work. So much for the citrus idea. Cooper licks it. So much for dogs not liking citrus. At least Cooper. I, I told you he's a food mongrel. He'll eat anything. So we're going with uh, option number whatever this is, two or three. We picked up some rabbit dog and cat repellent and we're going to spread it like it says to in a four foot perimeter around the outside of each of the uh, fruit tree guilds and we have their training collars charging because this is this is a behavior modification but so is that so we will have to catch them in the act give them a little buzz uh, give them a alert and if the alert's not enough then they get a little, a little zap that's the way we trained our other dogs, this is the way our trainer showed us how to train them, and it does work. We haven't been consistent with these guys, so it's time because they're being way too mischievous. They cannot dig up all of our work. That's just not going to happen. So that's the update.
repellent, and zap zap. <laughs>